I tell you what, man, we made it, and it's a it's a, a eight a.m. edition where I'm at. It's a six a.m. edition where Joey's at nine a.m. on the East Coast, and it takes a lot. First of all, to get us all together, especially getting <laughs> getting this guy, hey, getting this guy to go and join. I'm back, man. Right. I'm over. Yeah, I'm over okay. COVID. I had two months of COVID. I'm I'm back. I'm feeling good. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm really excited for this one, Mike. I I was joking around. I don't get up at five o'clock in the morning for just anyone. Uh, so I'm really excited to. Uh... I'm flattered, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the chat if you can hear us, how the audio is coming in. Hit the share, hit the like button, send it around. It's going to be a fun interview. We got a bunch of topics to go and discuss with Josh. And uh, yeah, we're excited. Let's bring in the uh, the man of the hour or Pernozo. First of all, how are you, buddy? Good morning. I'm good. I'm good. I, yeah. I don't get up this early for most people either. But yeah, Josh is, uh, Josh, I, I wouldn't miss this one. The funny thing is that when I told both of them the time, they were like 8 a.m., you know, so. Uh, yeah, that was the reaction I got from both of them in Messenger. But we appreciate well, both of you guys for being here. Well, Josh that's is, a challenge. Josh, to, Josh can be hard to pin down. So, you know, you get them when you can get them. Well, you know, whenever you're talking to a European player, that's a challenge, right? Because of the big time difference. So I'm just yeah. excited to, to be here. Let's talk about it because it is a little hard to pin this guy down. I've been trying to get an interview <laughs> with this guy for at least... At least a good six months. I went through Josh. He leaves me on read. Then I go through Pia, who I think is the boss. And she's, let me tell you, Pia is one of the toughest negotiators I've ever had to deal with, Josh, in my entire <laughs> life. The manager is is brutal sometimes, man. <clears throat> but she looks after so, you. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, first of all, I just want to say thank you to you, taking your time, and let's have a good time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it, man. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Josh, you're coming off a a uh, gold medal out in the World Games, and first of all, congratulations from all of us over here. Um, Thank you. But but let let let's jump right into the beginning, man. You were you were kind of buried, and in a match where you were a heavy favorite against Tyler, walk us through what was going through your mind because you were basically one foot out the door, man. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, it was just a tough one, to be honest. The whole match, uh, my break was really working. Couldn't make balls on the break. His work, uh, his break was just phenomenal, and he played really, really well. Um, yeah, but but at some point, I think it was I was nine four down or something. I wasn't really thinking to come back because he played phenomenal, and my, my break was just just not working. And uh, yeah, but all of a sudden he started making mistakes. Uh, I could take advantage from there. Um, breaking better. I mean, at least it was working. It wasn't breaking really better. But um, yeah, that was actually the turning point of the match that he made the mistakes. And I think at 10-9 or 10-8, he missed an eight ball into the side pocket to win the match. So uh, from there, I think that was just the key moment. And then the last rig, I broke off, I think, played a... Scratched, right? Oh, no, that was 10-9. That uh, When I scratched, he missed the eight ball in that rig. Um, I think at 10 10 I played it kind of safety. He play, he answered with the perfect safety and I kicked the ball in and run out. That was a 10 10 game. Uh I mean 11 10 game. I I mean I got lucky if I don't make the the kick shot I might lose the match so and then from there yeah everything went my way to be honest against Shane for example. His break, he broke well but couldn't make uh, couldn't see any ball after the break. He had to push out and against Carlo I got lucky several times. He made for example, against Carlo, it was 6-6. He made a combination, 2-9 combo. And then uh, the two ball flicked the cue ball into the corner pocket. So I think from, that was also like the key moment in that match. And then the final, luckily, Sanjan made more mistakes than I did. Uh, he broke better, but got uh, in the end unfortunate on the break. So I think luck was the biggest word in the tournament for me. Well, when you play, when you play as well as you play, you know, luck tends to follow you around a little bit. Uh, so you put yourself in a position to take advantage of those those breaks because everybody's going to get a break or two during the course of the match. It's what you do with them that makes a difference, right? Yeah. Yeah, Joshua, I'm curious. So you're constantly on the world stage. You're in these tight matches like the one with Tyler. Every top player that I've talked to talks about getting nervous, but you don't ever look nervous. <laughs> Tell yeah, us about... I might, yeah. yeah, I mean, I might... Don't look nervous, but I am. That's for sure. I mean, uh, I think most most of the times I'm more nervous in the beginning because I don't know how how the match will go. But I think when it's tight or I'm feeling good, then 
I'm just full of confidence still. I'm nervous, but in a good way. So I can focus even more on the match, on the balls and uh, yeah, being focused. But of course, when, you, when you're out there, you're playing only professional. So you kind of expect tight matches. And uh, you, I mean, when you expect something, you know already how it, go, how it can go. I mean, of course, against Tyler, 9-4 down. I mean, being 9-4 down, I know that I'm most likely out of the tournament. But I haven't traveled 20 hours to come to Birmingham with, <laughs> without fighting until the end, you know. So I fought until the end. And in the end, it paid off. Is it a is is it a different kind of pressure when you're playing this type of event, Josh, where you're representing your country versus, let's say, like, you know, a UK Open, for example, where you're just, you know, playing for Josh Filler? Uh, I always play for myself. To be, of course, I represent my country, but I'm there for myself. I just want to bring the gold medal home. Um, I think it's the same pressure, but for example, the World Games is more different because it's just one time in four years compared to a UK Open, but. I always say myself, I just only live once, so I just want to fight every tournament 100%. If I lose, I lose, but I just still can say I did everything for it. There's two things that I wanted to ask you about. And um, one is, you know, when you're coming back on someone like Tyler and it's 10 6, and all of a sudden it's 10 7, 10 8, 10 9, is there, was there a point in that match where you thought, you know, I'm just going to keep the pressure on him and I think I've got this? <laughs> Well, of course, when you like nine four down, then ten six, and coming back like ten eight, you know it's getting closer and closer. He does the mistakes, but still, it's alternate break, not winning break or Williams break. So I still have to hope that the break is not working or that the wreck is kind of you know not easy. So, um, but for example, like playing someone like Tyler, I know when the pressure is there, he probably make a, a higher percentage of mistakes than, for example, Shane or Carlo because they already sure. won the big tournaments and they know how it feels to play with pressure. And Tyler, I mean, he beat me at the Moscone Cup, um, but but I know when I play someone in race 11, like Tyler, I'm the favorite to win, but the match, how it went, he broke perfect and uh, he, he's supposed to win that match. But all of a sudden he did mistakes in the end and that's why I went through. The other question I was going to ask is, or, or comment I was going to make is that it seems like a lot of tournaments... Um, you know, I thought this during the when you came back in the Tyler match. If there's a match where Josh is maybe supposed to lose or 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 gets away with one, after that, after that match is over, I thought he's winning this tournament because he, someone had the chance to put him away and they didn't. And now, so do you do you consciously increase your focus after you've escaped, dodged a bullet, so to speak? Does it does it change your mindset at all? Well, I mean, when I look back, for example, on many tournaments I've won, most of the times I had one match where it was actually all, already over. For example, at the World Championship when I won, right. was against Kazakh. Yeah. Then uh, the US Open when I won was actually against Albin. I mean, I always can point at one match where, where I was actually almost out of the tournament. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that it changed something in my head or something because I still knew that I have to beat Shane, Carlo, and then someone in the final, doesn't matter if it's Sanchez, uh, Sanjin, or Yap, or whatever, or Coping Chung. So um, I still have to beat world champions, so it doesn't really change something. Uh, I think I just move on and uh, focus myself or, you know, I mean, in the next match I start over again from 0-0. Zero, zero, zero. So... I think it doesn't really change in my head. I just fo if maybe focus even more or something, but just move on. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you think any of those top guys get more pressure because they know it's you sitting there and your resume well, and your your firepower? Be I be like real with me here. Don't 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 give me the politically correct <laughs> answer here either. So, <laughs> well, I ask that question always myself, to be honest, because when I play Shane, he makes mistakes he might don't make against other players. So I don't know why why that is, but I like it. <laughs> because, <laughs> because yeah, when I play the big guys, they started making those mistakes. So I don't I know used why. To but... say, I used to say I don't think Josh does well from behind because you're a front runner and you're better playing with the lead because you once you smell blood, you keep your foot on their throat and you put them away. You're just you're a closer. And like Mike said, there's been a lot of tournaments this year where you're coming back from behind. What is it that changes, man? Because I've seen it over and over again. I can go back to the International Open last year when Oscar had you beat and you get, you know, he, he misses, I think, an eight ball and you and you go and come back. Like, your ability to just 
kill them when it's time. And I don't mean that with any pun intended, but you know, when it's time to go and put them away, you bury them, man. Like, what is it in you that gives you that kind of like that willpower? Well, I don't know. I just hate to lose against, doesn't matter who it is. I just hate to lose. I think uh, that's why. I mean, even when I'm down, of course, when you like 10 1, 10 2 down, you actually know that you can't win anymore. But, um, but against, the most of the players, I was just a few wrecks behind. Even though you play world champion, you still like most likely the one who has to lose. But I just fought, fight until the end. Or take the opportunities I get. If I don't get the opportunities, I lose for sure. I mean, just fight until the end, of, until it's over. I want to dig into that a little more. You hate to lose. All you know, everybody hates to lose, but. You know, at your level, losing can be devastating. Take us through the moments after a big loss, like with you and Pia. Like, what is it like? Are you in the hotel room throwing stuff against the wall? Or are you more reserved? <laughs> I'm really curious. Well, it depends how the match went. Uh, if I make the mistakes, I'm just angry at myself or, you know, sit there, doesn't really like to talk, maybe get some food. or And then after that, I just... <coughs> Look at the uh, look at the match with what uh, at the match what uh, which I have lost, and look at the mistakes I did, and then move on from there. Practicing the mistakes I did, was it the break? Did I miss certain shots, or was it just a safety game? Um, but after a tough loss, just for example, the US Open last year when I lost to Mieszko Fortunski, I had a match with, where. Didn't had really chances after the break. I had to play push out like the same thing as Shane did, had to do against me. Um, but for example, even though I didn't really did much wrong, I was really angry because I really really wanted to win the, the US Open again. But sometimes it just doesn't meant to be, and uh, you have to take it and uh, get better and better. What was the like... toughest loss? What, what was your <coughs> toughest loss in your career so far? My toughest loss. That's a good question. Even though I wasn't really ang angry after that match or disappointed, but it was definitely the World 10 ball final. I had really big opportunities in that match, but didn't really took it. I don't know. I think I didn't put too much pressure on myself and was just playing to lose or, you know, was just not 100% focused. I think that's why I lost in the in that final. Against Little Co, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good match. Um Following up just real quick on this Tyler match, Josh, there was a picture at the end. Whenever you guys are congratulating, I seen a video online. What did he say to you after the? Whenever you you make the winning nine ball. Well, first of all, I, I I told him that he played an unbelievable set, and then he also said like it was just a great match and well played. That, that's that's class from Tyler because that's that's a yeah. tough loss whenever you have that kind of lead, especially against a player like you. It's different. Yeah, that's right. Like, Definitely. When, when it, winning something like 11 6 against someone who maybe he's expected to go and win versus winning 11 6 versus, you know, the player who's probably the hottest player on earth, maybe besides like a Federer or Jason or Albin, you know, it's, 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 um, it'd be a notch in his cap. So that's a class move from Tyler. It didn't get any easier from there, though, Josh. She ended up facing Shane. What I, I asked Shane this, or me and Joey did whenever we had him out in Vegas who his biggest uh, opponent was or maybe his biggest nemesis was rival and he, yeah rival he didn't go and miss a beat josh it was it was uh, undoubtedly joshua filler what what do you credit your successes that you've had against shane like what is it about that matchup that you just go and thrive on i think it was just when i was young i always looked up to the big players right and shane was one of them i mean he won five times he was open and was it five or six i'm not sure but Still, he won a couple of times the World Pro Masters, and he's, I think, the player of the decade we have. And uh, I always looked up to playing him, or just was looking forward to play him. Since I've played on the Moscone and on the big tournaments, I just love it because playing the best players is is just the thing I want, and see uh, how good I am or how good we are, and uh, getting better and better from there, Le learning from the best players, and just feel like. It's I don't know. Feel like practice. I don't know. It's just great playing him, and yeah. when he does the mistakes, I don't know why, but I think he's just he, he's feared of me or just I don't know scared. Well, you said after that match and at the World Games that you felt like he gave up at a certain point and it made it yep. easier for you to play. Do you see it in his face? Do you see it in his actions? 
well, he didn't really took his time to break the ball. He was just, <coughs> just went quick down and didn't really stroke it. He was just, just shocked yeah. that I heard. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't really trying from there and the kick shots and stuff. He was just banging it. Was so. the first time you played him at the U.S. Open in Norfolk when you, you beat yeah. him bad? Yeah. You beat him bad yeah, and you were was, pumping your fist and, and yeah. shouting, whatever. That's I, I remember that was the first time you played Shane and you drilled oh. him and you didn't make a lot of fans in the US at that point because you were <laughs> you were pretty you were pretty excited about pretty much every shot. And this was relatively early in the tournament. Do you remember that? Yeah, of course. I mean it was 2017. I, I had to play the US Open because I had uh wanted to qualify for the for the Moscone Cup. And uh, was the, uh, I don't know when, I think the sixth losers round or something playing Shane but of course I was really looking forward to that I was kind of scared because I'd never played him before but there uh, was the whole match was turning my way yeah. um, because the break was I didn't I, I don't think I was breaking good but made balls on a break with position and he doesn't made any balls so yeah and I won like 11-3 or 11-4 yeah. I think 11-4 um, yeah so with the world games, Mike just uh, Melina just alluded to the fact that he heard that this was happening. There was a lot of frustration from the Americans. I really wanted to get into the event, but there wasn't a lot of coverage on it. We, you know, we couldn't see the matches, and you know, I know that there was that frustration from the American fans. I'm curious, like from a player's perspective, how you thought the event went, and also how the European fans have responded. You know, not being able to see a lot of the coverage or, you know, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, in the beginning, we got told that only the semifinals will be on, on TV or something. Um, of course, I was disappointed because I might not come until, uh, to the to the semis because it's a, just a single knockout event. So I didn't know if fans will see my matches. Um, but it, of course, it was just my goal to come to win. I, do, I mean, I just came to win the event. Uh, but the atmosphere and everything was great, to be honest. There were many fans in there. Was also interacting, like clapping, or you know, they were they were really into it. Even though when I played uh, Tyler, they were clap for me, and it was really really great to play there. But of course, when you know that around the world the whole fans couldn't watch it, was of course it was disappointing and bad. But I think they were really trying to do their best, and they did a good job. Uh, I really love it, and of course, when I also saw the, the the stream of my final match, they did a good camera job. I mean, the camera, yeah, great. the setup that was, was great. Really, really great. Yeah, I really loved it uh, to watch it back, and uh, yeah, of course, I really would have loved to play from the first match on on stream or on television, but it was just from the semis on. I'm interested to know the you know the World Games is an experience for you because the World Games is different than any other program. It's it's you know all these it's like going to the Olympics and um, you know I know the German um, uh, Q Sports uh, team all stayed off campus. You guys rented your own separate houses, correct? Yeah. Did you get much of a chance to interact at all with other athletes from other sports? Did you get to see any other sports? Did you get to take in any of the atmosphere that makes the World Games different? Uh, before the event, uh, we didn't really watch anything or talk to somebody because I just I was just there to focus on myself. I was 100% on the event. And But after the event, when I won the gold medal, the next day we watched Muay Thai, the fighting thing. But that was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. who, who would win? Who would win in a Muay Thai match between you and Shane Van Boning? <laughs> I, I got Shane. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, what What was a more nervous time for you, Josh? Uh, being down ten six to Tyler, or watching Pia go and fight for her tournament life against against Rublin, and what what ended up being a a hill hill match? I think watching Pia. Watching Pierre against Rubel in the whole match because they both played unbelievable well. Yeah. I think they both made maybe two mistakes or something in, in that whole match. And uh, yeah, Pierre got the big chance on 8 6 to go uh, 9 6, I mean, to win the match. And uh, yeah, it was just tough to watch it. <laughs> yeah. How how great of it though was it for you guys to like share that experience together though? Like go represent your country, travel out there together. You know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, you guys are premier athletes when it comes to Q sports and being uh, a husband and wife duo and, but being picked based off of your abilities. Like that's the coolest part for me, you know, hearing that. 
I mean, playing like the World Games together was unbelievable for our experience as well. I mean, I was there. I could watch the whole match. Uh, she was on my side, of course. It was great for my mentality. Um, and we had our coach, of course. So it was just a perfect thing. And uh, that Pia could have played one of the biggest events we, ha we have was also big for her, I think, for experience. And playing Rubel at that match showed her, of course, what she can do, what damage she can do. And uh, I hope in the next years we will see more, more from Pia winning big, big events. I ran into Pia in Birmingham at the Target. She was shopping with she was shopping <laughs> with Gunter Geisen at the Target in Birmingham after they first arrived. And you guys arrived, and your your suitcases and cues didn't get there, did they? Nope. Did we lose Josh? We might have lost Josh because his internet kind of ducked out at zero out of ten. So we'll get him back on here in just a minute. Uh, but yeah, I seen that though, Mike. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> on the way back, they I, I don't think they still have gotten their suitcases back because their queue really? barely came in from what I've seen on a Facebook post online. But it's been, you know what, the World Games, for the lack of coverage that it got, like, I think it's still important to go and, and celebrate these guys. You know, we got plans uh, to have on Kelly tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. I've been trying to coordinate that with her. And you tell um, me. You didn't tell me. You don't even <laughs> keep me in the loop anymore. Surprise, my man. Surprise. Well, I'm, you know, it's, it's, uh, the way Joey found get, out I about the told, one. I didn't get told either. So it sounds like he's keeping Kelly for himself. Hey, I reached so out to just, Melina. I, I can respect that. I reached out to Melina last night about this interview preparing. And he's like, <laughs> Yeah, are you going to jump on now? And I'm like, Jump on now for what? And he's like, I'm interviewing Oscar. I'm like, Geez, I'm the last one to know these days. You take two months off, Mike. And it's, Hey, Joshua, he's back. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Let me guess. You forgot that, your charger. Connection problem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's okay. No, it was just a connection thing. Awesome. Oh, well, welcome back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike, you gonna so. follow up with that question? Oh no, no, no. That was just a comment about running into Pia and Gunther at the Target when they were shopping, and uh, how you guys didn't get your suitcases in your queues for a day or so. That make you a little nervous um yeah i mean when we landed in uh houston we just had like a, a layover for 40 minutes or something so and then uh, our luggage was just uh, still on the plane or somewhere else and we had to pick it up actually to get to the next flight and you know and check in the bags but uh yeah it wasn't coming and we had to get our our next flight so we asked a guy and he said yeah just take the next flight and then we tried to get our, our suitcase on the on the plane, but it didn't got there. When we arrived in uh, Birmingham, we were just checking on the internet, and then it was they were just saying it, it will come the next day probably. So just yeah. had to wait one day for for the luggage. But I wasn't really nervous at all. <laughs> well, I mean, I <laughs> can see where you know. it would make players nervous though, because I mean, like Omar, his his stuff didn't show up. He yep. had to play with somebody else's yep. clothes and somebody else's cue, and he walked out in the middle of the match because he just was not he was not having any fun and having any success. So that's it's a big part. I mean, when you when you put that that cue case on a, yeah, which, on a luggage rack, I can understand you that. Switch. I mean, you play the World Games and don't have your own cue. This is yeah, yeah. this is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. millions of people play pool worldwide, but I would say a very small percentage actually travel and play pool. Maybe they travel one time a year to Las Vegas for a big tournament. Talk to us a little bit about how important it is to manage like all the travel that comes around it and, you know, making sure you get your rest in between and acclimate to the new time zone and things like that. Do you guys, are you purposeful about that or are you just so young that it just like bounces right off you and you can handle it? <laughs> Well, that, this is the kind of thing which Pia does. Yeah, uh, he, the manager he, uh, books all the flights and takes care of a rest day or like a jet lag day or something, how you want to call it. Um, yeah, like for example, where we play in Vegas, we probably come two days before the event or arrive two days before the event just to get you know get into the time zone and yeah, feeling comfortable. Um, but Pia does all it, and uh, yeah, luckily she does it well. <laughs> so we never have a problem with anything what how important has it been josh to have those um, people behind you like pia and your coach and i saw them you know your coach was traveling out there with you what what how important are they to team josh filler 
these are the most important guys, I think, uh, because they do everything for me. For example, when we're there, they're looking for food for me because I'm kind of picky with food. <laughs> <laughs> so to say, um, uh, with practicing and uh, just, you know, getting me relaxed because when I'm on my own, I'm, I'm just bored. And when I'm with, with these guys, we're doing, I don't know, playing table tennis and doing so many things, beer pong, but not with beer, just a pong thing, you know? <laughs> Water pong. <laughs> Apple yeah, juice pong. Before the gold medal match. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, um, and when I'm in my match, they always keep me composed and relaxed and, you know, so I can focus just on pool and on nothing else. I think without them, I wouldn't be that successful, that's for sure, or playing that good. <laughs> That's pretty strong, man. And it's great to go and have people like that can go and support you and that you can count on and depend on. It just helps bring you up mentally, man. Definitely. Just knowing you got someone in your corner. Um, let's transition, Josh, to that final. And you know, you you were down once again to Sanjin. You guys have had a lot of history over the last uh the last few months, Josh. Yeah. Over the last like let's say six to nine months, European championships, he dogs a nine ball, and you go and snatch away the the European nine ball title. Um, walk us through that match. What were you thinking? Because he jumped out, jumped out on you pretty early. Yeah, every, everything started actually. I won the leg in, in no match before in that tournament. I won the leg, so I was like, Oh, yeah, you won the leg, that's a big thing. Um, <laughs> but then I, John unfortunately gave me a bad wreck, I couldn't make the wing ball, and the one ball was going somewhere. It started really bad because from there, Sundrin uh, ran out and made a break and run so it was two zero behind it was like damn why did you win that lag <laughs> <laughs> um and then from there it was really really tough to win the racks because when when i was at the table the racks were really terrible to run out and i made t uh, crazy kick shots crazy cut shots and that kept me in the match and uh, i was breaking then I was break, breaking really well, but couldn't see any balls. I had to play push out, play kind of safety, and he broke just perfect. See, saw the one ball every time, could run out, and yeah, I was then 6-3 down. And then at 6-3, he made the biggest mistake because then he snookered himself on the eight ball. I mean, he had to play the four ball and snooker behind the eight ball. Yeah, and then he made the foul, and from there, his break was he had to play push outs and yeah. Uh, I was more in that match and had more control in that match from there. Um, and then I think it was 6-6 six, six, where he missed or 6-5 or he missed an easy five ball into, into the corner. Yeah, yeah, he did. I think I'm not really... I, actually I, I think it was like around 8-7 if I'm not mistaken because it, I think he had yeah, a chance to, like make that. It, yeah. to make it 8-8 eight, eight, and he misses that five ball and then you you yeah, go up right. and 9-7 from there. And it was, I thought I thought for sure he was out, man. Yeah, me too. Me too, of course, because the pockets were playing really big uh, of, um, as well when you play like these balls, as, uh, when you play these balls slow, not as hard with pressure or something, then the pockets were really easy to play, to be honest. But he wasn't really close to that pocket, luckily, and uh, left me an easy five ball. I could run out from there and I think from there I made every time a run out or a good safety, I just run the wrecks. And uh, yeah, got lucky to to win that finals. Of course, I mean uh, we played the European Championship final where he missed that easy nine ball. Um, if he wouldn't miss that nine ball, wouldn't have won. That's for sure. I mean, that was the nine ball to win nine seven in that final. So yep. got lucky there as well. I mean, I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> you get lucky a lot. <laughs> I, w I want to ask you about one point in the match because it was a little late, and I think you had him. I don't think you had him hooked, but he had to go and kick out a two ball. He comes off the three, makes the two ball on the side and leaves the three ball kind of hanging by the pocket, you know, and you think, okay, this is the role. This is where it's going to go and shift back yep. because it was late in that match. And um, what was going through your mind when he, when he dogged that ball in by mistake? Um, yeah, of course, when you play safety, a good safety actually, and then he flukes the ball. But to be honest, uh, we all had that situation where we did it. <laughs> But when when you when you're in the final of the World Games and uh, it's very yeah. close or a deciding point in the match and your opponent does it, you you're going nuts, of course, in your in your head. But I was just hoping that he will do another mistake, even though the three ball was hanging in the pocket. 
but it wasn't that easy because when I looked it back on the on the stream, it was really thin a thin free ball to cut it in. It wasn't really that easy, but luckily you missed that and left me a three ball, which I could have yeah, which, which I could pocket and then from there ran out and but when your opponent make a big fluke and a big wreck like I, I think it was seven seven or eight eight something like that yeah it was close like that yeah um you're just hoping you're just hoping that you come will come back to the table in the same wreck see that put me on tilt not when even playing you know i'm watching <laughs> i'm watching the live stream and my eyes are rolling i'm doing like mika with my hands in the air and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you man yeah, but no it's cool to go and have that kind of composure though <laughs> I mean, in the same. I mean, it's actually the same thing when you're ten six down and Tyler has still has still two breaks. You know, you're just sitting there and hope that he will break bad or get get bad luck or you know, you're just sitting there and hope nothing else you can do. Well, that's a great mindset, and you know, Sanjin's had a lot of success, but there's been a few young European stars, Josh, that are kind of like. That, that are coming at your heels, you know, and, and a few of them that come to mind are Sanjin and, and Wichter. And I just want to get your thoughts on on these two guys and any other young Europeans that are that are up and coming. Yeah, well, I mean, Victor, for example, he has won the Predator events. He won two or three Euro Tours already. So we will, we, will see, we will see more from him in the future. That's for sure. He will win big tournaments. That That's for sure. Um, he's just 20 years old or 21. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, and Sanjin, for example, uh, he was in the World Games final already. He was in the European nine ball final. I mean, both times he played against me, but and but this year I think he won the European ten ball. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Then we have Kachi as well. He's still young. Kachi, World ten ball champion. We have so many big players. Um, and every time play these guys, it's it's just pressure. It's I mean, one mistake can be can be enough against those guys. Um, but I like that we have so many great players because that shows me I have to pr I have to work even harder to be better than them. But uh, we know also know that luck is a big big point against those guys. And right now I I, I got the luck on my side. <laughs> but it can change in every it can change in every event. So I'm just working hard and you know hard work pays off. This is, is what I tell well, myself. And yeah, another guy that's that's back in the mix now is Feder. Um, are you happy for yeah. him? Are you excited to see him in, in the near future events? Yeah, definitely. I mean, what I want is playing against the best guys we have, and uh, he's one of them. So having him back on the big tournaments, it's it's a dream come true, to be honest. Because some people say, oh, unfortunately he's back, but I, I want to play him again. I, I enjoy playing him because it's always tough, and the better player wins in the end. Would there be any any um any thoughts on a on a big set of of let's say nine ball or ten ball with Feder for a little bit of cash you know would you <laughs> would you would you be open to anything like that josh i think Feder might yeah of course i mean well i i, I will play that's for sure i always want to play but uh just to be honest right now i just want to focus on the tournaments because money matches one thing but right. i want to be the best player and the best player is this is tournament wise and uh, having playing the matchroom events, Moscone Cups, and this is what I focus on. Of course, if I if I got time, I, I I'm there to play a big set, but um, most likely I want to play nine ball. Is is that what keeps you motivated bad. though, Josh? Like, is it <laughs> is it all these great players that are coming behind you or that are on your heels? Is that what keeps you motivated because you've won everything now? You know, you've won the World Cup of Pool this year. You're yeah. a world champion now. You won the the gold medal. I mean, the list goes on and on. So does that help you stay motivated? Yeah, of course. I mean, having, as I said, I love it then that we have so many great players. I mean, from Asia, from Europe, from USA, and yeah, from everywhere in the world. I mean, that that keeps you motivated, that make want to make you better because they're getting better. So that means you have to get better and better. So it's always you know go, goes by hand in hand and yeah so i know you said you want to focus on tournaments but i want to go back to the money thing because it's just so intriguing and <laughs> a lot of people in this country would love to see you versus shane in a long race um 
you know, I'm sure Shane's camp will want to play 10 ball. You'd want to play nine ball. I'm curious what your preferred, <laughs> what your preferred format would be like the race length, you know, what game, um, any details about the game? Like if you were setting a game and you were going to gamble, because I know sometimes we watch these races to 150 or 125 and even for the fans, sometimes that's a long thing to watch. <laughs> You know, and you specialize in, you know, the races to 11. You've got to be the favorite over almost anybody in the world, even Moscone Cup, the shorter races. What would be your ideal format if you had to play someone like a Fed or a Sheen? Well, actually, I think the fa fairest thing is to play like a best offset. Because if you play a race to 150, it's a long race. But when one guy is like 10 games or 15 or 20 games ahead already after a couple of runouts, it's it's always tough to come back. But if you play sets, you if that guy wins one set, you have the next set f starting from zero again. You know, um, right. I think that's the first thing, like like in uh, tennis, for example. But not like race to seven. But I would say race to I don't know 15 or best of five sets, whatever. I think that's the ideal format in my opinion, playing anybody. Nine ball, uh, nine on the spot. Doesn't matter if it's uh, three, po I think with, like the Euro, Euro Tour, three point rule. Yeah, this is what I would, I would like to play against anybody. Well, there was Let's some more, it. there was some more gambling talk since Joe was on the topic uh, from a certain guy who you've had a little bit of history with playing one pocket and that's Tony. Tony's made no bones about it, Josh. He wants a rematch. You know, you guys played a couple of years ago out at the basement during the pandemic, yep. <laughs> playing some one pocket. The fans want to see it, Josh. Lay it on me, man. <clears throat> yeah. I want to see it too because uh he's probably right now the best or top three player in one pocket so from nobody else you can learn so much of one pocket i mean of course you you have like scott frost uh, he's a great mover and efren or dennis or whatever and alex they got so much knowledge just by watching you learn so much um, but playing wise i think tony is the man right now he's winning every tournament that what i see on on facebook <laughs> so uh, i think we will we will see a rematch that's for sure when it's just a question question of when yeah no it's been it's been so fun i'm last ready few to days. play it's been I need fun a watching these. Uh, <laughs> a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't played, I haven't played one pocket recently, so I need a couple of hours to to get back in that game. <laughs> Did he just say, uh, Mike, Molina, Mike? That, that's Mike exactly Pinozo. what he just said. That's he just exactly saying he he's said. gonna play the best one pocket player out there right now, and he needs a couple hours to practice. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's called games. It's called, it's called gamesmanship. That's I just awesome. want to feel kind of kind of comfortable playing him because without practice i might i mean he's he gonna beat me he's a better born pocket player that's for sure he's better than me i know that but uh i think my 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 eight and out ability is it's still there <laughs> i won't lose it um i love that. i think that's the thing that was so surprising when you guys played before and also with uh like fedor just beat scott frost uh you know we know your guys firepower and your ability to run out but to see you be able to hang with some of the best movers in the world is something that's really, it, it speaks to how quickly you can adjust to something that's completely foreign to you. It's its not a, a game that you guys play very often. And um, preparing for that match with, with uh, Tony before, did you do anything other than a couple hours of practice? Uh, did you work with people and, and really try to learn the game? Um, before that, of course, I had like kind of players where I had to give big handicaps to just move where you have to uh, learn to move because you cannot run 14 balls every time. So mm. kind of move the balls and start learning that. Um, of course, then I worked with Alex Laley on my one pocket. He's a great coach, great, big knowledge he's of one pocket he, as well. He's he a big one a pocket lot. fan. Yeah. yeah, he helped me a lot with that. Um, before that, met with Tony, match with Tony because uh, we were doing some uh, Zoom <laughs> Zoom meetings. So I, I was in the basement of Roy and he, he taught me from there, from his home, gave me some lessons. We uh, um, practiced the break, everything. So, uh, yeah, that helped me a lot playing Tony. And of course, when you play Tony, you kind of learn after the break what to do. And what he does, you learn from his shots every time because I'm not sitting there and waiting for my, my shot. I was just 
taking with him actually what he's gonna do and you know just learning of course even though i would have lost i would be happy because i've learned so much from that right, match right. even though i won because <coughs> i'm not dumb and say I, i'm better than him i know that he's by far the better one pocket player just one because i ran out from anywhere and that doesn't yeah. mean that i'm the better one pocket player just mean that i just went out and played a different different kind of one pocket does what you learn in a match like that help your other game does it help your nine ball game does it you know do you do you, do you apply that do you look for yeah, situations i think mo most of the things i've learned was kicking and uh, playing a better cue ball like stick to the balls playing better safeties i think that this is the, i i didn't really learn from shot making i just learned from safety parts kicking right right right, right. Well, I see that uh, Emily's not happy that we're talking about one pocket. Yeah, right she wants now. us to get back on nine ball. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's make that transition back to nine ball, Josh. This December, you're you're expected to be announced as the first European pick in the Moscone Cup. Of course, Cup. no, just um, kidding. <laughs> and uh, no, it's pretty remarkable because you know it's based off of rankings and it's different. You know, it's it's off of merit and your abilities, which is phenomenal. Um, what can the fans go and expect this December, Josh, from you? um out there in las vegas well first of all i want to just be qualified for that event it's not fixed yet um after the next year or two and uh, the european master they will pick the first players of each team from the ranking um, but we know but we know better we know better <laughs> we know we, we know we know it's gonna get better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they go by ranking so i have to be first in that ranking otherwise i won't be get picked because of the ranking i'm willing um, to go on the edge and say there's a pretty good chance you're going to be one of yeah, yeah i'd be willing to bet a little money on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but i just want to be sure i just yeah of course want to win the euro two and the european open that's my goal of course otherwise i wouldn't be i wouldn't be there um yeah but of course when i'm qualified or be in vegas just gonna enjoy it i mean that's for sure we're gonna be we're gonna have the best team i think this year because I'm quite sure that Fr Fran will be there. He's yeah. playing, I think, with me, the top three right now in the world. Um, who else? It's going to be tough to call, but I think Albin should be in. And then we will see who's going to be the wildcards. Um, I mean, I think Jason will have a good chance to be back as the MVP. Agreed. And then the fifth guy. Yeah, let's, be hear <laughs> let's hear thoughts on, let's hear yeah, thoughts on number five. Everybody's got, everybody's think, got the think, top four okay, pretty well nailed down. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> everybody's, roll, everybody's rolling out who they think is number five. Where do you yeah. – I mean, it's, I know it's it's a tough thing for you to, to weigh in. That's on, really but, tough because right now the fifth guy, who else? Who can it be? I think Kachi is always there. Uh, Fedor actually, but he hasn't played in the big events. I mean – right now or victor as well but giving a rookie a wild card is i think it's tough to to do it okay um, hold on a second on that note how tough is it to go and play let's say because the only time federer got to play was when no one was there out in the uk mm -hmm. how different is it playing in las vegas with those american fans at your ear in that environment what how how different is it josh i mean First of all, I have to say, when we played 2019, I think, when we lost, uh, was the first time that the Americans were really, really into that. I mean, they were like the the British guys at the Moscone Cup. So they were screaming so loud. It was such a, was so different that we, I, I mean, I played 2017 before. And you couldn't really compare how, how the American fans were. I mean, I really loved it. I really enjoyed it because uh, that gave the uh, USA players more power. They played better and better from every day on. It was so tough to beat them. And uh, yeah, it's, it's such different. I don't know. You can't compare it to any other event. I mean, it's so much pressure out there. I'm in no tournament. I'm so nervous than playing the Moscone Cup. I never feel so, so nervous. Just hard to tell. I mean, you have to do the experience on your own and uh, handle it on your own. And uh, I, I found a way to handle it. I just enjoy it and having fun all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say having fun, but it can get under the skin of some American fans around the country, Josh. What do you say to those people who have quite a uh, a strong opinion on the way you carry yourself during Moscone Cup time and the yelling and the shouting and all that? 
I, I just can say I can understand the USA fans like going crazy with me or because when I see it myself, I know that how how I I don't know how how I am. It's it's hard to take. I think sometimes of course <laughs> the king thing. I just do it because it's 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 just fun. I mean, for me, the the Moscone Cup is just a show thing. Of course, I say the things, and uh, some people say I'm arrogant, I'm this, I'm that, uh, but I'm I'm way way off. I mean, I'm just I'm, I I think I'm just a normal guy. But when I'm at the Moscone Cup, just, I just enjoy. It. it Doesn't matter how people look at me or think about me. I just do my my thing, and uh, I enjoy it. But of course, when they say I'm arrogant. So, so they are thinking yeah. about me, but yeah. well, I, I know I'm not arrogant. I'm just enjoying my my life and uh, playing cool, of course. So, Molina Mike stole my question. That was my question. Yeah. But what I my bad, many man. many fans, <laughs> especially in the United States, when they first got to know you, it was through that, right? It was all the yelling and screaming and celebration, <laughs> and uh, you know. So, seeing you here today and talking to you, there's a different side to you you know, uh, humility, talking about your team and how that's like the most important part. And, you know, just hearing some of the things you say and the way you talk about some of the other competitors, but in the heat of battle at the Moscone Cup, is that something that really like to you inspires you? It fires you up as like you're yelling and screaming and, you know, kind of acting a little crazy, Josh, you do look at, yeah. you know, it's a little crazy. <laughs> is that, I think that's kind of, kind of the way I am. I mean, I'm, I'm great. I know that I'm crazy and that I'm different <laughs> than other people. And, uh, of course, sometimes it looks like that I'm arrogant or just, you know, I don't know how else I can mention or uh, talk about, but yeah, it's, I think the way I am and people think about how they want and how they see it. And if I scream or not, uh, I see the post so, or what kind of things they, they talk about me and Pia or whatever the bad things. I always see that, but I think uh, the haters are motivating me more to, to be better. And, uh, winning Pool more needs tournament. more personality. I'm, I'm just saying like it is, man. Pool needs more personality. And it's it's one thing to go and have a big, boisterous personality and to talk a lot of smack. It's another thing to go and have a lot of personality and go and win and win consistently. And you've done that. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're kind of... Um, what Albin did last year was something special in the game. And I think you have an ability to take a good, a good swing at that, you know, with all of your successes this year. I, mean, I know Shane won the world championship, but um, like you, you, from what happened, I remember that year you won the U.S. Open. You're coming off the world championship win, and you don't try to go and repeat it like you are doing now is, is pretty remarkable. And that's what gets under people's skin the most. Plus, Let's just be real. American fans can't stand when you beat Shane. So, you know, that's that that's part of it. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I mean when you play a tournament, you don't you don't really choose who you're gonna play. It's just a draw. And if I play if I have to play Shane, I will get 110 percent And uh, if he does the mistakes, I probably will win every match then. But if he plays perfect, he 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 can he can win the match, that's for sure. I mean, that's that's part of the part, part of the sport. Yeah. So is Europe going to win this year? Yeah, there you go. Put them on the spot. Yeah, I think so, hundred percent. Blowout. I Give think we have match. <laughs> because we have the better players, in my opinion. Of course, you have Skyla and Shane, and uh, I think right. at, at the Moscone Cup, Skyla is a better player in the Moscone Cup, to be honest. Um, but still, we have five great players, and USA has not the same same level. Okay, I, it's not my opinion. Let's put him but, really on the spot. Is there going to be but, a day four? Mm, mm, <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah, but it's still a race to five. I mean, I, I don't say USA can never win again, but most likely you, you will dominate the next years. That's well, my opinion. I, on that. I think that if if they were to go and bring in an Asian contingent to go and, and take on the Europeans, I think would be a lot more competitive than let's say the Americans are. And I'm not meaning any disrespect to the Americans, especially Captain Pinozo over there on, on my bottom left. Um, <laughs> but would you like to be a part of something like that, Josh, where you go and see an all Asian team up against a, a top European team? Yeah, that's for sure. I, 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 I would like to be part of that. That's for sure. I mean, uh, I don't know what kind of five 
uh, players you want to pick of Asia, this will be tough. <laughs> Who would you pick? Huh? Who would you pick? Um, my top five: Wu Cha Ching, Chang Yulin, um, Ko Pin Yi. Oh, that will be tough. You got the Filipinos too, Carlo. Yeah. yeah. Carlo, yeah, I'm sorry, Carlo, yeah, definitely, and Dennis. That's a pretty good You know good what team. I think? So, <laughs> so Emily's in here, and somebody already asked that question in the chat, and I think that'd be really interesting. And right now we have mm -hmm. USA and Europe, and really the home field advantage is just the fans. But if it turns out to be Asia, imagine like if when you go over there, you're playing with all the people crowded around the table and the chickens running through, that would be a real home field advantage. You know? 100%. <laughs> That's legitimately home field. Um, let, let, let's transition, Josh, to an event that's coming up in a few weeks in your home country yep. in the European Open. Um, three weeks away. Well, this is whenever this flyer was made, but you're, you're the face of it, Josh. How special is it to go and have a, a big tournament like this? What will you know, essentially be considered a major um, being played on home soil? Um, yeah, just to be honest, it's a dream come come true having a big, big, or one of the biggest events in pool uh, in Germany, and uh, yeah, Germany is a great country for pool. We have so many great players or coming from Germany, and uh, most of them will participate in this event, which makes it more interesting and uh, will be more pressure, I think, playing in in my home country because. Of course, they want to see me win that event, or many, many guys want to see me win this event, but I know how tough it is to win any event in pool right now because we have so many great players. But it just will just be focused, and uh, we will see how it goes. I'm going to enjoy that for sure, and uh, I go, I'm going to enjoy, enjoy the oh, whole man, time. Oh, man, we don't want to hear we'll see how it goes. We want to hear <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snap this thing off, man. Yeah, doing? but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know We're, if I'm going to win. Because if I don't ha have the luck, I won't win. <laughs> All right. Serious question because I heard the break rules are are going to be a little bit different. The box is going to be a little tighter. It's not going to be a traditional break box. What are your thoughts on it? Have you tried it at all? What successes, if any, are you having with it? Um, to be honest, uh, that's why we are here actually at my at the coach house at our coach house to practice a break because uh, the European Open is coming up and. This is the biggest event. I mean, I mean, the next biggest event which is coming, and uh, I have to be pre prepared. So, uh, I I did a couple of breaks, and uh, I think the break is going well right now. Not hundred percent, but uh, yeah, of course they they did the break rule thing. I mean, they changed the the, the rules, and this is hundred percent more tougher than before, because now it's not guaranteed to make a ball on the break and uh, having position after the break. So, yeah. The guy who has the better break will win the event, I think. Well, I wish I had that. I, I, I wish I had that graphic because it's 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 real interesting. But I like that they're not. It, it, I tell you, because the last few tournaments were real tough to go and watch. You got the, the one ball coming around three rails and dressing up yep. with a lot with a lot of consistency. And, and I know they made it a big point to go and have four inch pockets. But it's like when you're having that same like post break pattern at a high percentage, it can make the game, you know, very redundant and boring. So to go and change it up like this and really make you guys swing at it, I love, man. And I think it'll really make – as as important as the break is, especially for rotation, I think the better pool player will end up winning this event, which which is what I want to go and see. Because I think you'll have a lot more of actually playing pool, the moving, the jumping, the safety play, the kicking, all yeah. those things that we all love. Yeah, 100%. You will see more technical things and with the break. You will, you won't. We'll see as much as uh, as much runners as before, definitely. Um, yeah, and as you said, the better player will win, and with that kind of kind of format. Do you like right. the changes? Yeah, I love it because uh, now it's not like hitting the one ball firm and you make a ball on break. Now it's really, really with, with technique and with uh, hitting the one ball perfect and everything. It's not just hitting one ball firm or just solid. You guarantee to make a ball on the break. Does this change the favorites? Change your favorites? I don't know. I think it's make this kind of break format will make it fair for for not that hundred percent professionals because they will get more chances against anyone. It's not like uh, 
I don't know, kind of seven run out thing. That won't happen with that break, I think. If it happened, I, w I just want to see how the guy breaks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think you will see more tighter matches with that break. You know, you said this a few times today, Joshua, You when you were talking about Tony and now you're talking about watching your opponent. It seems like you're a real student when you're playing. Uh, you're really watching what the other player's doing. You're watching who's having success and who's not. For up-and-coming players out there, how important is that? Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I mean, when I when I started playing, me and my father, for example, he bought the DVD of the World Championship 2006 where Ronnie Alcano beat uh, Ralph Sukay, and I watched every match of it, of the whole World Championship. And... Uh, Still, I'm watching every YouTube match of myself or other players to just learn. I mean, uh, this is what you have to do, right? I mean, at that time we have right now, we have YouTube and we have you or Facebook. You can see so many great matches of the best players for free. And uh, I think it, it couldn't be better for anyone to learn so, so much about pool. All right. So who are you going to face in the final, Josh, of the European Open? <laughs> Let's put it. Come on. Come on, let's get you out of here uh, on this. <laughs> I hope it will be Shane. Yeah? I'm yeah. surprised to go and hear that, man. You want to play Shane? I don't know, man. Yeah, Shane. Of course. Well, then he figures oh. it's a lack. <laughs> <laughs> so stirring, when Shane goes back. Stirring the pot. When Shane stirring watches the pot, this, we're going to blame Pinozo for this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would oh, be my dream final, to be honest. I, never, I, I think I never played a final with Shane. No. Well, I know we're all we will all be tuning in and listen. We appreciate you making time for us. I know it was early for all of us, Joey, especially you, man. You know, get, getting Joey locked in was was phenomenal. I told I sold Josh on the idea. I said, no, man, we'll make it thirty minutes, and we've already doubled down on that. So, you know, we, we appreciate your patience. We appreciate you jumping in, uh, Mike. You got anything else, Joey? You got anything else, man? No, nah, it was yeah, you know, it was great. It was a pleasure, yeah, Josh. So from my side, yeah. Thank you for taking your time and. It was a pleasure and it was fun to be here with you and uh, talking a bit. <laughs> well, Great. keep that in mind when you get a message later on down the road to come on again. <laughs> All right. So just try, right. to, just try to remember that, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> All right, Josh. We appreciate it, my man. Have a great day and good luck uh, you, practicing the break, man. Best of luck. Yeah, I will. Thanks. Take care. See, see Cheers. You,